a business, we have all the steps that we will follow until we get to the financial statements. So a source document will be prepared, it will be recorded in the subsidiary journals, we will post it to the ledger, we will draw up a trial balance to ensure that the debits and credits are the same, and then we will complete the financial statements. And why do we do these financial statements? Because people want to look at the financial statements and they want to analyze the statements to see is there, there anything that they have to do to improve the profits of the business so that they will be able to make more money in the future. So if we look at the reasons why we analyze this question, uh, financial statements we see the first one is for the profitability so how profitable is the, is this business how can they control these expenses so profitability where will we get that information we will get it in the income statement so to use the this calculation we will take the income statement and we will do various calculations. So for instance, gross profit on sales. So it's sales, le less cost of sales, gross profit. Then we put the gross profit on the sales to see what percentage of the total sales is actually used to buy the goods, to, to provide the goods, so the cost price of the goods. And we can calculate the gross profit on cost of sales. So we take the gross profit divided by cost of sales times 100. And why do we do this? If we had a profit, say for instance, of 75% on cost price, then we took the cost price, we added 75%. Now we go to the financial statements and we look, is this profit that we actually made 75%? And if it's not 75%, it tells me something happened to reduce my profit margin and I must investigate and see what caused this reduction in this profit margin. We will do all these in the questions that follow. Operating profit, so remember if you look at your income statement we have sales, less cost of sales gives me gross profit, less plus other income, less other expenses and that gives me the operating profit. So the operating profit is the profit that we make in our daily activities in the business. So it's before we take interest income and interest expense into account. So this calculation will show me how much is the profit percentage that I made on sales after I took other expenses and income into account. The operating expenses on sales, here we put the operating expenses divide by sales times 100 and that means here we can work out what percentage of our total sales were spent on expenses so that we can see um, where I can reduce the expenses to increase this profit. The net profit is the final profit in the income statement and that is the profit that we will take onto the sale so that we can see after I've taken all income and expenses into account what is the actual profit percentage that I made on my total sales. Okay, the second um, activity is can the business pay off it immediately debts? That's liquidity. Now, if you think of the word liquid, it like water, liquid, it flows. And that is the same with current assets and current liabilities. It flows in and out the whole time. So debtors, uh, inventory, cash, creditors, it's not the same for month in and month out. It changes basically every day in a business and that is what liquidity do. So we will do two calculations for liquidity. The one is the current ratio that I take the total current assets 
in and to the current liabilities. So I take current assets divided by current liabilities to see whether I will have enough um, cash and debtors and inventory to be able to pay my current liabilities. Now inventory takes a long time to sell and then we must still get in the money. So that's why we do an asset test ratio. Because according to the current ratio, it could be, say for instance, two to one. Then we say for every two rand that we have in asset, current assets, I have one rand liability, so it will be easy to pay for it. But if I do the asset test ratio, I take the inventory out because we first have to sell the inventory before we're going to get the cash and then quite often when I do this asset test ratio then I realize that the business will not be able to pay their current liabilities because they have too much stock in the business and you will not be able to sell all that stock so then we will have to investigate and say what is the reasons okay we've got too much stock how can I improve the situation? I will have to try and sell stock as quickly as possible at reduced prices, a special sale, um, special promotions, more advertising, so that we can get the cash in to be able to pay for it. Okay, the next one that we will look at is the risk. What is the extent of the risk on borrowed funds? and capital investment okay so that means here we will do a solvency ratio that's my debt ratio so it is my total assets to my total liabilities solvency is all my assets minus liabilities net assets remember what did we do right in the beginning when you started with accounting I said assets equals equity plus liabilities. So what do I see here? Net assets, that's it, is equal to equity minus liabilities. So if I go and I subtract the liabilities from my assets, it will give me my equity figure. And that's what they say there. The net assets, so it's the assets minus the liabilities, will equal the equity. The solvency amount is all my assets minus my liabilities that tells me how much money is left over. The total assets to the total liability. So this is the calculations that we will do to determine whether the business will have enough uh, assets, total assets, so it's current assets and non-current assets to be able to pay all their liabilities, non-current liabilities and current liabilities. Return to the owner is the next uh, calculation that we will do. So that is how much money profit did the business owner made on his capital investment. So remember, any uh, guy that opens a business, why do they do it? They want to make a profit. So that means at the end of the year, you want to go and calculate what is that uh, profit or return that the owner got on his capital that he invested in the business. So say for instance that profit is 3%. Do you think it's worthwhile carrying on with this business? I could rather invest that money in the bank and I get 5% interest with any hard work without any risk at all. Say for instance my return or my profit is 25% then it's worthwhile carrying on with this business because I'm getting a better return than what I would get on a normal investment at the bank. So the whole purpose of this analysis is that we want to see when we analyze the figures in the income statement and the balance sheet, where can I improve on situations to make a better business with bigger profits that is able to pay their liabilities in the future? So what do I see here? 
to do the calculations for profitability, I'll take the information out of the income statement. If I look at the liquidity and solvency, this information comes out of the bank statement. The return, okay, here I have to take the profit into account. So it means I actually take information out of the income statement or balance sheet. Or to do this, if they don't give you the full income statement and balance sheet, they can give you the note for equity and in, for the note in equity gives you capital plus profit less drawings. So that means I can also do this calculation out of the note that goes with the balance sheet.